we had the opportunity to chat with a fine actor who certainly has joined the ranks of modern horror stars, Malcolm McDowell. He's been evil enough to portray Dr. Soren, the man who killed Captain Kirk in Star Trek Generations, but portrayed true horror in films like The Cat People and the Tales from the Crypt TV series, as well as battling evil as Dr. Loomis in Halloween in 2007 and in its sequel. And you can see him with our friend Jeff Daniel Phillips in Rob Zombie's movie 31. We talked with Malcolm at this year's Flashback Weekend Horror Convention about his amazing career. I am just so thrilled to finally get to meet Malcolm McDowell. Mr. McDowell, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you. I, I wish I could say the same. <laughs> <laughs> I've always enjoyed your work. One of my favorite movies of yours is Time After Time. And I always was very impressed by that movie. I, I, I just love the chase after Jack the Ripper. And I'd read yeah. something about that you actually studied H.G. Wells' voice. Well, I, I thought that I would um, try to, you know, I'm playing H.G. Wells. Of course, here, nobody knows who the hell he is, but um, I thought I, before coming out to Hollywood to make the movie, I should do some research, so I called a friend of mine in the BBC who worked in the archives okay. and had him find a record of an interview that um, H.G. Wells had done in the 20s on mm -hmm. the radio, mm -hmm. and they'd recorded it. And I was on a big record, and I played the record thinking, oh, I'm here to hear the great man speak. This is how I'm going to sound. And I played it, and in my shock and horror, he had a, a real high-pitched voice, and he, <laughs> he talked in a southeast London accent <laughs> like that. And I thought, I don't think I can play the part like that. <laughs> it's not very romantic, is it? <laughs> That's great. Yeah. You've done so many great things. Clockwork Orange. You, you've done voiceover work in cartoons as well, haven't you? A lot you? of that, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, including some of the DC comics, I believe. I've just done um, um, a huge video game. Um, oh. What is it? Oh, God, of course, I've forgotten. I've done lots of video games, actually. Um, Fallout 3 and... Mm -hmm. um, God, what is the damn thing? Nobody here can help me. <laughs> but anyway, I can't remember, but it's one of the biggest... And of course I can't remember. My kids would kill me. <laughs> and you were in Heroes? I was in Heroes, Entourage. I'm doing a, a series at the moment on Amazon, which is, you know, streamed or... Sure. You can get Amazon um, Prime. Mm -hmm. And it's called, it's about an, an orchestra and on the, right, all the political f that goes on behind the scenes. And it's called Mozart in the Jungle, and we're in our third season. Terrific. And it won the um, best comedy, a Golden Globe last year. So we're very yeah, we're blessed. It's lucky. It's a good yeah. show. Okay, you played H.G. Wells. Yeah. If you, if you could actually have a time machine... I know now it was called Call of Duty. Call of Duty, okay. Okay, good. See? what's the next one? I, I guess I, I brought that to your mind. Yeah, finally. Yeah. yeah, finally. If, if you were H.G. Wells... Yes. ...and you had a time machine, and you could go back, would you go back and not take any certain role that you've played? Oh, my God, I've been making stops every two minutes. <laughs> um, of course. But, you know, I'm a working actor. Sure. I don't make moral judgments mm -hmm. on the characters I play or the scripts. Sure. Uh, it's I, all about the work. Basically. Well, I mean, I'm a working actor. I have a mortgage. Mm -hmm. I've got kids. So I have to educate them. Sure. I have to be a responsible citizen. So, um, and, uh, of course, I turn a lot of real crap down. But if there's something that sort of tweaks my fancy, mm -hmm. then I'll do it. And as uh, James Mason said to me, he goes, well, there, there are three things I use as a criteria. He goes, I always ask, how much money, who am I working with, and what's the location? He said, if I can get two out of three, I'll do it. That's terrific. Malcolm, thank you so much. Pleasure. A pleasure to meet you. Nice You've been a fan for a long time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Malcolm McDowell, everybody. When you talk about multi-talented performers, this lady's at the top of the list. Adrian Barbeau, it's so nice to see you here. Thank you very much. And it's when you come to these horror conventions, I always like to ask actors, were there horror movies you really liked when you were growing up? Never, and <laughs> still not. <laughs> I don't like horror movies. <laughs> oh, but you've done such a great job in them, like Creepshow 
and, and and of course the fog, which was pretty scary. One thing I like about those movies is I think it was not so much CG stuff, but practical effects. Oh yes, it was it was much more difficult because, um, for instance, in the fog, the scene on the lighthouse, where I'm surrounded by fog and then something happens off screen and suddenly the fog goes away. Well, we didn't have CGI. Sure. We <laughs> just had kerosene mixed with oil oh. that they could fan into the room, but they couldn't pull it out. <laughs> so we had to act that whole scene in, I had to act the whole scene in reverse. Oh, and no. then they flipped the negative. They run it and, backwards? And, oh, and, yeah, that's so. really funny. And you have such a wide range of talent. You were in musicals, you were Rizzo in Greece. I was the original Rizzo in Greece. Before and, that, I was one of the daughters in Fiddler on the Roof. Yeah, I had an idea for Fiddler on the Roof to make it a horror movie. Well, it what is if no 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 if what if the fiddler was being chased by werewolves and that's why he's on the rope <laughs> no okay it's bad enough he was being chased by the, the russians <laughs> that's true yeah. yeah and you've worked with some of our friends uh mark hamill on the as catwoman Cat on the batman yeah. animated series yes yeah that's really cool and other great comedians you worked with rodney dangerfield I've, I've been very fortunate rodney was fantastic he was a character and i i think there was another guy that was so much fun that you got to work as oswald's mother oh yes on the drew carey yeah, show Drew, oh all four of those four of the four funniest fellows I've ever worked with, along with Donald Pleasance oh, sure. from Escape from New York. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. And I thank you so much for doing this with us. I understand you've got a movie. I have a new movie that is just uh, starting to air on Tubi, you know, the free uh, streaming channel. Today, I don't know when this is going to be shown, but it's it's on the air already. Okay. Called Hustlers Take All. Great. So, That's so cool. And, and one other thing, you're an author too. I am an author. I am an author of five books. Five? And yeah. were some of those about vampires? Well, my first book was a memoir, uh -huh. which has some wonderful stories about the, the movies that sure. I've done. But no vampires. Not no vampires in that one. <laughs> that was that's called There Are Worse Things I Could Do after the the song that I sang in sure, Greece. Yeah. But then I wrote a series of vampire novels. Mm -hmm. I co-wrote the first one. It's called Vampires of Hollywood. The second one is Love Bites, and the third one is Make Me Dead. They're a trilogy. <laughs> and then just two years ago, I put together um, a, a compilation of stories from all of the actors who had appeared in the Broadway production of Greece, nice. or the national company or the touring companies, John Travolta, Mary Lou Henner, Treat Williams, Barry wow. Boswick, and their wonderful stories about their auditions, getting the job, losing the job, <laughs> doing the job, getting fired from the job. Yeah, <laughs> and, that, yeah. it's a, and that's called Greece, Tell Me More, Tell Me More. So that's that was my last, great. that's my fifth one. Before we go, I have to say, Everybody remembers you from Maud with yes. B. Arthur. Yes. How many times did you have to hear, God's going to get you for that, Walter? <laughs> I loved hearing it. I loved hearing it. It was a wonderful show to do. I was yeah. so, I was very fortunate to be involved in that show. And we're very fortunate to talk to you. Adrian Barbeau, everybody. Thank you.